Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I've got a video with a few sheets to show you here. These are all going to my buddy Scott over in Australia. And uh, if you guys aren't already familiar, Scott has been really awesome with me. He's been doing trades with me for a few years now uh, where, <clears throat> excuse me, he'll send me some knives and some of them will come back to him in Kydex sheets and some of them will stay here to help me build my collection. So Scott, thank you brother. You've been awesome. You've helped me build uh, my collection and you have introduced me to a class and category of knives that I didn't really have any experience with and it's your fault that I'm addicted so <laughs> all right all right so we got <clears throat> these knives going back to Scott there are some really cool ones here um, start with this this is actually my knife this is a Bradford Guardian G3 sheep's foot so or 3GS I think is how it's written G3S, ah, whatever. Um, he asked for this one set up with spacing for tech lock. I did <clears throat> something a little bit different with this one than I normally do. Um, you of course have your typical vertical, horizontal, and a couple options for canting. So basically these pair of holes, and these two pairs of holes I should say, are kind of relative to one another the same way yeah so you can just find more angles by doing it this way and it looks a little bit strange but that's how it works um, the retention is pretty much all achieved down here on this little nub at the bottom of the choil and you can hear it does have a click in there's no rattle there's no play nice ballistic one-handed draw um, similar to some of the factory or uh, production sheets you see out there from a couple of different companies the difference is that uh, the retention is actually quality on this. It's not like super tight. It's not difficult to draw. And the thumb ramp actually doubles back over enough that you can have a comfortable uh, place to push against. So um, the point of getting the retention up here on this nub rather than on the handle scales like I normally would is because if you notice the shape of the handle with the Bradford, typically handle scales will come almost all the way to the front of this choil here. And usually when you start having that down slope, that contour affords a Kydex maker something to grip onto to achieve that retention. With these, the scales start right around the midpoint of that curve, so you lose that chance to form retention on the handle scales. So I'd have to pull it all the way back here. I have done that in the past, and uh, I'm definitely willing to do that. And it gives, it makes for really nice retention, really smooth draw, all that. Um, but it also means that your initial grip on the knife has to be kind of compromised. You have to grip a little bit further back and everything is operated, you know, further back and then you complete your grip. That's not really a problem for me. I don't think that's a problem even in an emergency. Um, but when possible, I typically try to get good indexing, it's called. So you want your index finger to get up in there and uh, pretty much be exactly where it's going to be when you need to use the knife so that it just draws in the perfect position. So, there you go. That's the Bradford 3GS, or G3S. Uh, the next knife, another small guy. This is a really cool blade. This is the Sentry by Ambush Knives, and Ambush is produced by Bark River. I'm not really sure how that all works as far as the, uh, the companies go, but um, yeah, Bark River produces this one, much like they produce Phobos knives. Um, so I assume that the designs are all done outside of Bark River and then they pay Bark River to actually do it. Um, which just means that you are going to get incredible quality. You're going to get amazing attention to detail. You're going to get legendary heat treat. And I'm not sure what that means as far as the warranty, but I would, I would imagine it probably falls under the purview of all Bark River warranties. Or it's just lifetime, pretty much no questions asked. Just excellent, excellent company. Um... The sheath for this one is also set up for a tech lock and I am currently working on putting together um, basically every potential option for Kydex systems so that I can get pictures of it and update my website and uh, try to do an overhaul and make things a lot better for you guys. So I currently have a paracord necklace on it. I'll take a picture like this. Maybe I'll even send it to Scott with the paracord on it. Um, so all right, there we go. Coyote Brown obviously. And this one was black multicam fabric. Alright, the next 
The next step up is going to be the Cold Steel SRK. This is a pretty famous knife. It's used by a lot of guys in the military. Um, it's just generally known as a really high quality, um, usable kind of do-all knife. Uh, you can see it's definitely got more of like a combat style uh, profile to it, but um, it's pretty cool. Typically, I think this comes in SK5 steel, which is, uh, if I understand correctly, it is kind of like the Japanese equivalent of 1095. Somebody correct me if I got that wrong. Uh, I think that's what I had heard. I'm not super up on like which steels are equivalents. Actually, Scott is like my, my steel shaman. I always ask him steel questions, and he always has the answer. Dude knows everything about steel. So uh, this one is a special edition. It comes in CPM 3V. And if you guys aren't already familiar with 3V, you got to check that stuff out. It is a powder steel, not a forged steel. Um, it's just awesome. It is super strong. I would say of the steels that I've used, 3V is probably my favorite. If not, it would be definitely in the top like two or three. But this thing is awesome. Really nice knife. He asked if I could set this up uh, on a dangler, and he wanted nylon. That would be a clamp failing on my press. Awesome. <laughs> I've got a K-Bar TDI in there cooling off right now, so I guess I'll fix that in a minute. Um, all right, so he asked if I could do it on a nylon dangler, and um, he liked the way I'd done my nylon danglers uh, in the past where I put this kind of logo plate on it just rivet a logo plate to it but he asked if I could do it with spacing that would accommodate a tech lock <sighs> sorry guys yeah yeah so basically the idea is if you want to wear it as a belt loop you can just slip your belt through this no problem and if you want to wear it on a tech lock you can just take hardware and put it through the holes on this and wear your tech lock so you would just attach the tech lock to it and then you could slip this on and off your belt without having to undo your belt to thread it through the uh, nylon there so this looks really cool and works really nicely um, you can see when I was putting this together I accidentally screwed <laughs> the wrong one onto the wrong sheath so these are totally interchangeable you just have to take these two screws out and take the uh, take the the uh, loop the nylon loop off and put it on the other sheath but that's that. All right, so one thing actually I think I want to mention here is <clears throat> you guys see these sort of reinforcement plates on most sheaths that I do. Um, especially if the sheath is getting a little bit bigger, I typically try to do these reinforcement plates. There are exceptions. You're about to see one. Um, <clears throat> and with smaller knives, um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, it's just, it's an option. You can tell me if you want it or not. Um, it really does add a huge amount of strength to the sheath and uh, just makes, I think it looks really nice too, uh, particularly if you have different colors going on, um, you know, get a little bit of an accent going and that can be a really cool effect. So, um, but yeah, just kind of rule of thumb for me is the larger the knife gets, the more important it is to reinforce because the longer the sheath is, the less... Uh, the less rigid it's going to be. It's obviously going to have a lot more room to flex. So it's important to reinforce and brace it a bit and make it, uh, just make it sturdy and durable for you guys. So anyway, this thing has a really nice draw on it. Clicks into place, no rattle, no play. And set up that dangler plate, nice and low profile. All right, the next one, this is an exception. And it's not an exception because I didn't, you know, you, you can definitely put a plate on this. I just chose not to. Partly because if you check out, there's very little border. There's very little Kydex border on this. I kept it pretty much just as low profile sheath as possible. Um, so there's already not going to be much edge, edge flexibility because it's so close to the blade. And the blade's certainly not just going to flex on you. Um, so that's part of the reason why I didn't do this. Another part was because with this sort of plain shape, um, I didn't think it would... Yeah, I don't really think it would look good to add a plate over it, so I just kind of left it plain as is. This one obviously also has that nylon dangler on it, um, <clears throat> compatible with tech lock. <sighs> Sorry guys, I even had coffee right before this, this is sad. Alright, this thing, 
nice and smooth draw. This is, I hold on one second. I'm gonna grab the box so I can tell you guys what this is. All right, so Scott is always on the hunt for um, different knives that you know might be budget friendly. Uh, I think he kind of mentors people at bushcrafting and and just general knife tasks, and um, so he's talked about like recommending knives to people. And obviously, if you're just getting started into it, you're probably not going to buy a super nice, super expensive knife. But it's nice to know that there are budget options that are effective. So this is one of those. I think he's just exploring to see, you know, how he likes it, how it performs. This is the Combat Ready Knives something or other. <laughs> I actually don't know what the model of this thing is. I don't know if it has a model name. It's the CBR CBC01 if you guys want the serial number there. Um, that's all I know about it. It doesn't really say anything else on the box here. So um, pretty big chopper. It's got a little bit of an angled handle. So this would be like some kind of a combination between like a nada and a, a kukri maybe uh, i don't know give me you guys opinions down below if you know anything about this or this style of knife if, if i'm totally off base definitely correct me down in the comment section and <clears throat> let everybody know what's going on so this thing very difficult blade to uh get good retention on because there's not a ton of contour to grip onto and that contour kind of goes in the wrong direction uh, because of the cant of the blade so it was a little bit tricky, and a lot of the retention is actually going to be right down here on this metal choil. <clears throat> Excuse me. However, it is, given its setup on the dangler, it is definitely not in any danger of coming loose on you. And it does have really good one-handed draw on this. So you should be able to use this really nicely, and it's heavy enough that it'll sit right down in the sheath. You'll never have to worry about it just popping out on you. Um, I did put a ceramic rod on this. And this is an, a little nod to Jeremiah at Com Country Preppers. If you guys haven't checked him out, CP Kydex. I'm not sure if he's still at it or not. I haven't seen any new videos in a long time. But um, he was one of the first guys that I discovered when I, when I started getting into Kydex and looking at videos and whatnot. He had a ton of videos out. And uh, he used to do this thing with ferro rods. If the rod wasn't drilled out already, he would do this little um, Kydex handle on it. And the whole reason for the handle is so that there's an eyelet and something where you can attach an elastic piece of shock cord. And the reason that you need shock cord is to retain a rod, particularly ferro rods, because you whittle them down as you use them and then they become loose in their holders. Um, but with something like this, it's useful as well because you get positive retention and you also have a nice smooth draw. You don't have to worry about making a holder really tight around something like this. Uh, it can be nice and loose and easy and shock cord keeps it retained. So this is <clears throat> a universal spacing. This is three quarter inch spacing across. So you're seeing one and a half inches from screw to screw here. And it can fit on any one of these five sheaths. There's one more sheath I have to show you. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so the last sheath is for, this is a fun one. This is the K-Bar Parangatang. And it is obviously a Parang. It's a big chopper. Very interesting knife from K-Bar. <clears throat> Super sharp. And the sheath I chose, so most of the time Scott just tells me to kind of do my thing. Um, he doesn't give me specific requests for colors or anything like that. This one I chose. I thought it would look really cool. We got OD Green and True Hide Whiskey, which is just... True Hide is a leather-looking Kydex, and Whiskey is the color brown on this particular uh, setup. So we have... There's like True Hide Whip, which is black. Whiskey, which is this darker brown. Uh, there's a Tequila, which is a lighter brown. And then there's one other. I can't remember uh, what it's called, but... Um, so anyway, this is the sheath I made for him. Um, looks pretty cool. It's got another ceramic rod on it, same setup. And this one is set up to carry as a baldric system. So you would attach a two-point sling to these D-rings here and carry it horizontally. Um, one thing that I did do to this thing so that it would be even more versatile 
is if he wants to ever carry this as a dangler, I personally wouldn't because I don't like how long it is, but you can muscle this D-ring into the upright position and just put one of your nylon danglers on it. You also have the option of taking, <clears throat> you could take the dangler off of, uh, or take the D-ring the off of either one of the other sheaths. <sighs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Screw it on down here and run a thigh strap around with the, the two D-rings at the base here. So you do have uh, some options as far as how you want to carry this. You can also, of course, take the two rings off of this, put them at the base of this, and then make a drop leg set up with that thigh strap. So, yeah, this is pretty cool. I'm starting to try to really um, make everything that I do as, as universally compatible as possible. Um, a lot of the time with custom Kydex, it's important to build custom things for a particular project, but if it's possible to sort of make it span across and be usable on another system, that's so much the better. And if I'm building you multiple systems, you can bet that I will probably have uh, a lot of the components be uh, able to cross over from one to the other. It depends on how complex and what, you know, it's, it's all, I guess, dependent on what is going on with both systems. But that's sort of the goal. I try to make everything as, as uh, uh, yeah, universal as possible. All right, so this thing has a really nice draw on it. <clears throat> it's basically a ballistic draw. It's super smooth. And then resheathing, you get a great click. One thing with resheathing this, though, um, if you look at the shape of the blade, obviously it gets wider as you go toward the tip. That means that when I create the sheath for it, I have to do some kind of blocking, it's called, which means that I fill the space above and below this section of the blade so that it becomes, it looks as wide as down here at the tip. So if you're looking at the sheath, the profile, this whole thing, it all pretty much looks like it is the same width all the way through. You can see a little bit of the taper start to happen right there. And this is essentially where it was just uh, several layers of, of uh, painter's tape that I used to kind of fill that spot. Um, so you have a couple of those little kind of marks on there from the formation process where I was trying to get it to... Uh, um, to widen out so that there would be a smooth passage for the widest part of the blade. Um, so that said, when you initially put the knife in, especially if you're, you know, vertical like this, which you probably will be on a Baldrick system, you'll be carrying it horizontal rather, not vertical, um, the tip of the knife has a tendency to go up and the handle has a tendency to drop. And because the blade is narrower here, it's not going to support itself up. So you actually need to manually lift that up and push it in. You can resheathe it from below. If you push hard enough, it'll, yeah, I mean, you can kind of like lift it up in there, but it just doesn't feel right. It's not smooth, it's not graceful at all. It's just best if you manually align the handle with where the handle is going to go in the sheath, and that's that. But apart from that, there's no rattle, no play. The retention on this is excellent, and of course, uh, as it's hanging on you, you've got a ballistic one-handed draw, of course, so. Alright guys, that is all I've got for you. If you like these sheets, if you like this video, if you like these knives, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And comment down below, tell me what you think of all this stuff. Uh, I'm particularly interested to know what you guys think of the ambush century i haven't checked too much out of ambush knives but they look really cool very mean little designs um and uh what do you guys think of this parangutan sheath this this was my favorite of the builds that i did i just really like it uh i think the colors look really cool together and yeah you know, i'm a big fan of baldrick systems as it is so uh all right i'll stop rambling thank you guys so much for tuning in stick around for the next one god bless